The Trinity is a familiar part of our concept of God, yet the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet one-third of that Trinity seems to bring controversy and confusion to many people trying to get a handle on their faith. Joining me is Bishop Ronald Hill. He's pastor of Love Unity Church in Compton, California. He speaks often on how we can better understand who the Holy Spirit is. And Pastor Hill, glad to have you with us again today. I'm glad to be with you today. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, it is one-third of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is, is a person. He's part of the Godhead. Explain to us how we can better understand who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. Well, I think it's a very simple concept. The Holy Spirit, of course, as you stated, is the third person in the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is as much God is as God is and is as much Christ as Christ is. He is a part of the very essence of God, the Holy Spirit. And he plays a major role uh, in Christianity. He plays a major role in the creation of the universe. He plays a major role in all aspects of God. He's very important. And it's no wonder that Satan would love to confuse people about who he is because to fail to um, allow him to lead us and guide us is to, is to be hindered as a Christian. Uh, you, you mentioned that the Holy Spirit is, our, is, is like a GPS in our life. Can it kind of explain that to us? Well, the Holy Spirit leads us. He, the Holy Spirit is God. He knows the beginning from the ending. He has all power. I'm reminded of what Jesus said about him. Jesus said, I'm going to go away, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you helpless. I'm going to send you some help. And he's going to be exactly like me. So he's, he's the most intelligent uh, being in the universe. Uh, I say to people oftentimes, God the Father so loved the world, he sent Jesus the Son. Jesus the Son came and did his job and went back to heaven and sent the Holy Ghost to take his place. So at this moment in history, the Holy Ghost is representing the kingdom of God in the earth realm. He lives inside of us. He leads us and he guides us. And again, he knows everything. He's all powerful and he provides life and fulfillment and direction and supernatural power for the believer. What, what's, the, what's the essence of being led by the Holy Spirit? How can we tell that we are or are not being led by the Spirit? I think it's important uh, that we understand, first of all, uh, where I pastor, I promote Bible reading, Bible study, and Bible memorization continuously because the Holy Spirit will always move in tandem with the Word of God. And that's very important to know that because if you're not well versed in Scripture, a voice can come to you and mimic the Holy Spirit. And if you're not well versed in scripture, it can lead you out to do something that you swear God told you to do it. Like, hence, we've had people in America over the years who said, well, God told me to kill you. God told me to do this. And they heard a voice, but it was not the voice of God. So to be able to distinguish the, the voice of God over another voice is to, is to always know that the Holy Spirit will never say anything that controver that, that's controversial, or, or shall I say, anything that is against uh, the word of God, number one. And the Holy Spirit will never lead you to do anything that is that will harm other people. So you can know that it's the Holy Spirit because he will speak to you in terms of leading you to do the known will and sometimes the spiritual will that God has placed in your life. Now, if people hear uh, kind of church terms like being filled with the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit. It has a tendency to if, if someone is a, a, a non-believer and they're, they're seeking God, that kind of a spiritual thing kind of kind of confuses them at times and maybe even scares them. Uh, is there a reason to, to be afraid of the Holy Spirit? I think sometime, and, and I, 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 I don't want to offend anybody by saying this, but I think that there's a lot of ignorance uh, in churches where people are open to the Holy Spirit. Uh, they equate emotionalism, displaying a lot of noise and maybe dancing and expressing themselves demonstrously before, uh, uh, before God. Uh, uh, and, and people assume that that means that you are being led by the Spirit or that you're Spirit-filled. Spirit-filled can be a, a very quiet experience. And being Spirit-filled and Spirit-led basically is the same thing because one cannot be led by the Spirit if they aren't filled with the Spirit. And if you're filled with the Spirit, you have the potential of being led by the Spirit. So I think that... Um, 
uh, people confuse it by observing people who supposedly are spirit filled when all the time they aren't. And so God will never do anything to embarrass you. He will never do anything to, to cause you to display any ignorance. He's a gentleman. He's intelligent. And he always leads us to give glory and honor to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in the earth to glorify Jesus. And so we, the, the, there's no basic difference between being Holy Spirit filled or being led by the Spirit. It's just the fact that we hear the voice of God and we obey him. That's being led by the Spirit. Now, there's people out there right now that aren't really familiar with the, with the, the Bible or the Word of God. And they're always, uh, people say, well, I'm, I'm afraid that I've committed the unpardonable sin. And there's a place in the Bible that talks about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is an eternal sin and is not forgivable. Can, can you address that? Can you, can you explain that to us? Well, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, well, I guarantee you, if you're concerned about it, you haven't done it. That's what I always say. Because... <laughs> So if you're concerned about it, you haven't done it, and, 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 and uh, when people are overly concerned about it, it means that Satan is just playing a game on your mind. Because if you are so corrupt and so demonically controlled that you would blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you don't care, and, and, and you're not concerned at all because you would not have the, the enough uh, reality about God in your soul to care. So if I was someone out there being concerned about that, I wouldn't worry about it at all. If you're concerned about it, you haven't done yeah, it. Yeah, is there, is there a way that uh, somebody says, well, I, th this, this spiritual thing really puts me off. I'm afraid of it. Is there a way that they can follow God, understand the Word of God, understand God's will in their life, and not be led by the Holy Spirit? It seems like that's the Holy Spirit's job description. Yeah, I think it's impossible. It, it is impossible for a person to walk with God without walking in the Spirit because the Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you can't know God except you know God by the Holy Spirit. You can't come to God except you come by way of the Holy Spirit. And of course, you can't walk with God without walking in the Holy Spirit. Can you give, a, give us an example of how you've seen the Holy Spirit work in your own life? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just one really good example. You know, I, you know this, sure this may sound a little, may sound a little <laughs> hard to you now. Uh, a matter of fact, I just left a prayer meeting, and I shared this in the prayer meeting today. There was a girl that I was going to marry back in the day. Now, I've been married 46 years, so it's been many years ago. Her, her, her name was Bertha, and she was a chocolate, beautiful black girl, and I was enamored with her, and I had decided to marry her, and unknowingly, God didn't want me to marry her. She had done something that I was uh, displeased with. And she promised me that she'd never do it again, that she would, she would not uh, ever think of doing it again. And, I, and, and, you know, love is blind, and I, and I believed her. She had had a minor surgery, and um, she was living with her sister at the time. I, 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 so I went out and play, played basketball this particular night, and I never do this. I came to my apartment, sit on the edge of the bed, fell back, and went fast asleep. After being asleep for 35, 40 minutes, now get this now, don't let this spook you out, but a hand came into my chest and bounced me up and down on the bed and, and I awakened and the, uh, the voice of God said, call Bertha. His name was Bertha. Call Bertha. I get on the phone. Long story short, the Holy Spirit tells me to drive over to her, her, her home where she was living at the time. And I got over there and there she was sitting out in front of the house in the car with a married man. And the love that I thought I had for her just all drained out. That was the Holy Spirit. I never would have gotten the wife that I, that I have now had the Holy Spirit not warned me. The Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Well, you mentioned something there that a lot of non-believers, a lot of non-Christians wouldn't understand when you said you were, you were praying in the Spirit, you were praying in tongues. Quickly explain that to me. Well, I understand that, and, 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 I, and I was hesitant to even mention that, to be frank with you. Because I know speaking in tongues is, um, is, is a controversy and some people believe in it, some don't. I was raised in a Baptist church in East Texas where nobody ever mentioned the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, when people got happy in that church, they would fan them and drag them out. So <laughs> I, I had no experience with, uh, with, with tongues in the, in, the, in the Baptist church because as a child, I used to wonder 
why are they dragging Mrs. Johnson out of the church? I couldn't figure that out. Well, or Mrs. Johnson. Uh, yes. <laughs> so fast forward. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, was, I was seeking God. The Lord had dealt with me. He had dealt with me. I was not even going to a church. I was just spending my time reading the Word of God and praying. I was so ignorant of the Word of God until um, uh, I would get in my closet, take all the clothes out, and get in my closet and pray because the Bible said when you pray, get into your closet. So I figured I was going to try God for six months. I told God, I said, I'm going to try you for six months. That's obedient. Prior to that time, I hated God. My sister got ill and she died. Six months later, my mother died. Nine months later, my grandmother died. I used all the profanity I could muster, and I cursed God out and told him I wouldn't have anything else to do with him because I was so hurt and bruised inside. Went all the way to Vietnam now. Of course, in Vietnam, I prayed. <laughs> but, um, but I was away from God, and he started talking to me and dealing with me. And uh, so I, I wasn't in anybody's church. I asked a question on the bus. I was driving the bus, and this big, uh, huge black lady get on the bus, and I asked her about the closet experience. And she said, what closet experience? As well, the Bible said, when you pray, get into your closet. Everybody on the bus began to laugh. And I'm thinking, what's so funny? I'm, I'm in this closet. I'm sweating. I'm about to pass out. And they're laughing. And so the lady said to me, she said, where do you go to church? I said, I don't go to church. She said, you need to go to church. So she invited me, unknowing to me, to a Pentecostal church, a church of God in Christ. And when I went into that church, a man by the name of Bishop S.M. Crouch laid hands on me. And a few days after then, I was in my apartment praying alone and tongues took me over. I didn't ask for them. They took me over so I know that they're legitimate. So praying in tongues is the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's a gift that you can use to build yourself up uh, in the spiritual arena. Well, Bishop, I'm sure that gives a lot of people a lot of hope today. Thank you for being with us today. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.